Apple's got a summer surprise for you. It's a brand new 27 inch iMac. Is it worth investing in right now when ARM-based Macs are just down the road? Let's find out. There are a lot of interesting new features in the new 2020 version of the 27 inch iMac. Apple just announced it earlier this week, but the one that's probably most practical for anybody living in the nightmare world of 2020 is this one I'm looking at right here, and that's the new webcam that's built in. The new iMac finally has a 1080 resolution webcam. That's better than most other Macs have. That's better than most uh, laptops have. I'm using it right now, so hopefully you can see the difference. And it's also got the studio mics that they first put into the 16 inch MacBook Pro last year. Those have been imported here as well. So hopefully this looks and sounds a bit better than your average workplace Skype or Zoom call. I'm gonna go over a couple of the highlights, uh, things that make this new 27 inch iMac frankly seem as good or better than the iMac Pro. Now you can get 10th generation up to Intel Core i9 processors, up to uh, 10 core processors. You can get up to 128 gigs of RAM, although frankly, you're gonna probably get 16 or 32 uh, for graphics. And this is one of the only things other than the Mac Pro, the iMac Pro and the 16 inch Mac Pro where you can get discrete graphics in a Mac, well, they've got the new 5000 series AMD Radeon cards. This one's got the Radeon Pro 5700 XT. Now that's the highest end version you can add on. Uh, if you get the base model new iMacs, they're gonna have uh, lower end new 5000 series AMD Radeon cards. Now, why do you need high end power like this? Well, you probably don't, but if you're somebody who, let's say you're working from home now, let's say you're shooting and maybe even occasionally editing your own video, something I never really used to do, but now I seem to be doing a lot of, well, then maybe you do need some higher end hardware, especially combined with a big, really nice screen like this. If you're doing high end photography, shooting in 8K, which I don't, but I do shoot in 4K, or if you're doing any kind of CAD or 3D work, which I sometimes do, or if you're working in development, anything game wise, anything in 3D, well, these are all good use cases for a high-end, very pro-level machine like this. Another new feature is the T2 chip that Apple has added to this device. It's in several others, and that does a lot of security stuff, but it also helps with things like video encoding. Apple, for example, says that with the new webcam on here, the T2 chip can help figure out when there's a face in the frame and what that face is versus the background and adjust the exposure in order to really emphasize the people rather than the backgrounds and other things in the frame. Now, it's not gonna do facial recognition login, which frankly, we would all like to see since we have it on our phones, and it doesn't do the sort of face tracking where let's say the camera would cut in a bit and follow me around while I do this. Uh, but you know, looking at it just with uh, the ch changing lighting conditions in here, it seems to be maintaining a pretty decent look on my video. There's one more really high-end feature that's bled down into this new 27-inch iMac. It's something that previously we had on the Apple Pro display, again, as an option, and that is the Nano Texture Screen. This is a very non-glossy, non-reflective screen. I've got a lot of natural light coming in here next to me, and a lot of other screens in this room are very hard to see because of all the glare. I've got no glare on this screen right here, and that is because there's a little pattern etched into the screen. That's the Nano Texture, and that really helps give it a nice matte look without having that sort of uh, almost foggy matte finish that uh, non-glossy screens usually have. The Nano Texture is an extra option. It adds $500, uh, but it's really great, especially for brightly lit rooms. I think that if anyone has seen it on the Mac Pro display, it's the kind of thing you want everywhere. So now we're starting to see it in other places, starting with this 27-inch iMac. Now you may be saying to yourself, wow, this sounds great. Why don't I run out and buy one of these right now? What's the catch? Well, the catch is this new iMac looks the same as the last 27 inch iMac, which looked the same as the one before and so on. The design of these systems has not changed in many, many years. The MacBook Air fell into the same trap where it had the same design for a long time. Other systems evolved past it in terms of look and feel. And eventually they had to give the uh, MacBook Air a major refresh. This still has a minimalist modern look. There's a lot of nice touches to it, but the big screen bezels around it really feel dated right now. There's that single piece foot to it and you can tilt it up and down like this. But what you'd really like to see, frankly, is the ability to raise the screen up and lower it. And if you're working with a very high-end professional tool like this, that's something you may want. Now, I just got my hands on this new 27-inch iMac. I'm just starting to benchmark it. I'll try a few things. Maybe I'll even play some games, don't tell anybody. Uh, and we'll report back with more in-depth 
testing scores, benchmark scores, impressions later on, but at least very initially, I really like the new webcam. I've used it for a couple of Zoom meetings and a TV appearance already. I like the nano texture screen. I can really tell the difference. And I like that even with all the new options, the starting prices on this iMac are the same as the previous model. That's standard Apple operating procedure. Uh, they update the components, they add new stuff, but they keep the starting price the same to give you uh, you know, a feel like you're getting some value out of it. Do you have to run out and get a new 27 inch iMac today? Uh, if you're stuck working at home and you really need a high-end professional workstation for especially for photo and video, well then maybe you do. If you've been saying, oh, I'm gonna wait to see what Apple does with their own Apple Silicon, those ARM chips that will eventually come to every Mac over the next couple of years. Well, no, this is an Intel model. It may be the very last Intel one we see, uh, but it certainly throws in a lot of the bells and whistles.